This video is going to be a commentary on the NFL's announcement last week about the Lions opening the NFL season on Thursday Night Football with the Kansas City Chiefs. If you were to rewind back in time one year or certainly two years, five years, eight years, 12 years, no one would believe that the Lions would be slotted to open the NFL season in front of a national television audience, the entire world, basically. Uh, I think it's an amazing season opener, and I think it really says a lot about what the NFL brass thinks about what's being built in Detroit, uh, what the Chiefs offer, obviously, in terms of ratings, quality product, and their ability to not get blown out. And what I mean by that is the Chiefs are the type of team that could call, fall behind by 20 points, and they're still going to make a game of it in the second half. I'm not so sure that that applies to really too many other teams in the NFL. Probably doesn't apply to the Lions, but who knows. I mean, they're the Super Bowl champs. They get a home opener on Thursday night football. They should be the favorites, right? They're, it's a fran they're going against a franchise in, De in the Detroit Lions that hasn't made the playoffs since, I think, 2016 and then 2014 before that. Haven't won a playoff game in like 32 years, and that was when they had a 23- or 24-year-old version of Barry Sanders, who's now 54. It tells you how long it's been since the Lions had any kind of impact nationally and on a play from a playoff standpoint. I mean, they, they're still the Lions, right? So a lot of people would think that, I guess, if you just looked on the surface that they didn't make the playoffs last year. I just think that assessment is totally wrong. And for anybody who really pays attention, uh, this is a team that has a, a very clear goal, a mission, if you will, and that's to get into the playoffs and win the NFC. I don't think that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes are planning on just winning 10 games or, or nine games again in, this, in the case of last year. They've made a series of great moves in the last 365 days. Brad Holmes has just put together, if you ask me, three spectacular drafts in a row. In my opinion, the third one might be the best one. And uh, there's a lot of people who have different opinion about that. That's no problem. Feel free to let me know in the comment section. Uh, but time will prove whether Brad Holmes was correct in, in the, the players he drafted in the first round and the second round. I think the Lions did a great job of adding talent at positions of need. And Detroit, as a fan base, is really excited about this team, as they should be, if you ask me. They put together a spectacular offense in 2022 with very little to no contribution from first-round wide receiver Jamison Williams. I think he had one reception last year and then one 39-yard run. He did have a touchdown called back against Green Bay for what I thought was a BS penalty. But the Lions also improved the running back position, in their opinion, this year, drafted a, a, ba a legitimate backup quarterback slash possible quarterback of the future in Hendon Hooker, replenished or reinforced the tight end position by drafting Sam Laporta out of Iowa. And in the biggest move for me, they brought back or retained offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, who did a spectacular job last season. I think the Lions were fifth in points scored in 2022. The front office, in my opinion, improved the defense, especially at the DB position with the acquisitions of C.J. Gardner-Johnson and then outside corners or cornerbacks Cam Sutton and Emmanuel Mosley and then drafting Alabama hybrid safety Brian Branch. Those four guys are athletic. They can cover. They can tackle. Uh, I, I know that getting rid of Jeff Okuda is interesting. Um, nonetheless, I, I still believe they improved the defensive back position in the secondary. I really thought the Lions were going to go corner sometime in round one. But they picked up Brian Branch, a guy who can play the nickel slot, who can play safety. And they obviously like their cornerback group more than a lot of us other people did. So the, the time will prove wh whether that's correct or not. First round, Brad Helms took Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell. And a lot of Lions fans were surprised, especially because the front office had not traded DeAndre Swift yet. But really, if you ask me to get back to the game, this entire Lions team has a perfect opportunity to prove itself and improve their gameplay uh, and justify the front office selections and moves immediately. It's a great opportunity to make a statement in front of the entire football world and the entire NFL world. And the cool thing for Lions fans is you get to see where your team is immediately, right off the jump. In Kansas City, the, Ch the Chiefs are going to present a world of problems. The Chiefs are battle-tested. They're capable of finding your weakness over a 60-minute game. Now, look, the Lions did finish 2022 winning 8 of 10. It was a tremendous sprint to the finish after starting 1-6. and six. In an interview recently, I think with Kyle Brandt, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, Dan Campbell called the Chiefs the heavyweight champ. Man, that's a cool, um, 
cool way to describe it. Tells you a little bit about his mentality and what he's going to try to preach to the team that this is a fight. And he credited Andy Reid and the players, you know, of the Kansas City organization. Campbell also made a really unique point, I thought, that um, I would never have thought of. That the Thursday night football game isn't a true Thursday night football game because normally you only get in four days to prepare for that game. Well, even less. You're playing on Sunday and then playing Thursday night football. It's a benefit for the Lions to get their Thursday night football game out of the way, unless they have another one later on in the year, but I don't believe they do. I don't see one as I'm looking up and down their schedule. And then they get 10, ga- 10 days to prepare for their Week 2 matchup against the Seahawks. And that was one of the games of the year in 2022. The Seahawks won, I think it was 48-45 in Week 3 or 4 last year of the Lions. So it's a unique point that Campbell made. They get extra time to prepare for the Seahawks in Week 2. And they get the entire offseason to prepare for the Chiefs. Am I saying I expect them to win both games? No, but Campbell made a unique point, and it tells you about his mentality and the way he'll talk to the players and the rest of the people in the organization, that they look at it as a benefit to get the Thursday night game first. And I think he's right. And then they get 10 10 days to prepare for the Seahawks. Well, nine days, and then the 10th day is a game. He's also said, you know, this means the NFL thinks the Lions won't get their ass kicked. They won't get blown out. I think he's got a great point there. They'll be better defensively. I know they didn't pick up an edge rusher in the draft, an outside linebacker. I didn't think they never thought they needed one. I said that in other videos. They improved the DB group. If you believe, you know, if you listen to what Campbell and Brad Holmes have said, despite trading Jeff Okuda to the uh, Falcons, uh, they improved the DB group. Campbell keeps mentioning opportunity every time I hear him talk. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. Um, I think it's an opportunity in multiple ways, even if you lose. It's a long way from a playoff game, right? It's week one. But in some ways, it's actually better for the Lions franchise. And what I mean by that is uh, the only way they'd face the Chiefs in the playoffs is to face them in a Super Bowl. So obviously that would be the ultimate. But let's look at it this way. Kansas City, Andy Reid, and Pat Mahomes, offensively, they will reveal your defensive weaknesses in week one. Over a 60-minute game, they will find holes, they will see openings, and then come back and exploit them. And your st- your coaching staff and the, of the Lions will be able to deconstruct that later on. Well, maybe in live time they'll adjust. But my point is, even if you lose the game, it'll force you as a staff to improve afterwards. You can't do that after a playoff loss. You're out. The play the game season's over, right? I think this. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think this opportunity is win win for the Lions. I'll go a step further. Even if they lose week one and lose week two against the Seahawks, they've kind of shown the ability to come back. I mean, when you're one and six, you're, the season's over. I mean, it should be, and it was not. And if you look at the early that first seven-game stretch last year, the Lions lost, I think, three games that were very winnable. Well, score-wise, there was four that were close, but that Seahawks game, they scored a late touchdown that made it 48-45, but still, it was a great game. They they gave the Eagles hell last year, I think in week one. So point being, I think they're going to do the same thing with the Chiefs, even though it's on the road. Either the Lions are going to get a win in week one and make a statement, or their weaknesses and and areas to improve will be exposed and revealed, and they'll have the next ten days to work on that before you face the Seahawks. I'm I'm excited for the for the for the game. Obviously, everyone is. It's an NFL fan. I'm excited for the Lions team because I I intend to cover more, make more Lions content next year. I'm excited for Lions fans. Uh, really can't wait to see the game and find out how much their roster, how much their coaching staff has improved, uh, or if they've improved from their torrid, you know, eight wins in 10 games finish to 2022. Let me know if you are as excited about the opener. I know that there will be or probably have been complaints about why didn't we get to see Josh Allen or Joe Burrow? Like I'm not I'm just not one of those people that only thinks about quarterbacks. I'm just not. There's 22 players on the field and I just don't look at quarterbacks as being um 50% of the importance level. I don't. I never will. Because I've been around the game at levels that are different than the NFL, and I've seen that you know everyone has a responsibility. You've got to fulfill that responsibility to the best of your ability. And I feel like the Lions are building a team that is all about responsibility, do your job, to use a Patriots, a Bill Belichick saying, and then figuring out ways to make the players more efficient in accomplishing their roles and accomplishing their job. Let me know if you share my excitement for the Lions being announced as the NFL opener on Thursday Night Football against the Chiefs. 
in Arrowhead. Huge task, huge opportunity for the Lions to make a statement and let everybody know that they're still going to be the same, the same team that we saw in the second half of 2022. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans might enjoy this content, please consider grabbing the link to this video and sharing it on social media to help this video get more reach.